Hello, welcome to Sephra's World. As you can see by the sweat pouring off of me, we are having another heat wave day here in Toronto. And we're also having a hotter than hell scandal in the horror field. Remember a couple weeks ago when I was talking about Cocky Gate and I was saying, well, I'm going to start a writer's behaving badly YouTube view thing. And yeah, here we go again. I wasn't kidding. There's a scandal a minute in our little writer's field. You think writers are boring? We're not. <laughs> but man, you when you upset a writer, it's bad. It's really bad. Right now, Facebook is on fire. Everybody's pissed. Not everybody. There are differing sides on what's happened. So let me back up. Let me paint the picture of what has been happening. Let me just uh, fix this a bit. Oh, maybe I made it worse. I don't know. I'm just like, I got to get back from this light because I'm just dying. <laughs> it's like, I don't want you to just sit. Makes my nose all red because I'm so hot. I'm really, uh, I'm not sure why my nose is so red. I haven't been in the sun really. I am a goth after all. Um yeah so what happened what's going on what, what's the scandal those of you who aren't friends with the people involved or the people who are upset then you probably have no idea this is happening but it's interesting and it's a learning lesson it's a learning curve situation i don't get as irate as a lot of my friends do um I think because I'm old and I've kind of seen things, you know, swell up and go away over the years. And as a woman horror writer, I feel like I have a specific role to play. And so in my own way, I was playing it. So what happened? There's a publisher called Hellbound Books, and I'm not really that familiar with them. I, I mean, I know the name. But I haven't been going to conventions in years. And as a lot of you know, I kind of stepped back from writing for a few years. And I'm only just starting to get back into it again. So I'm not sure who all the players are right now in the horror field. When it comes to the micro presses, the small presses, the independent presses, and so on, there are a lot of them. And there are a lot of them with very similar names. A lot of them have blood in the title, a bloodbound, uh, um, Hellbound and blood book you know there's all kinds of there's too many <laughs> i'm exhausted <laughs> so this is why i can't keep up however i will say that there was an announcement yesterday and apparently it had been announced a few days before as well but i hadn't seen it but yesterday caught my radar i saw an announcement for a book dedicated to jack ketchum now jack ketchum is a very big horror writer very big in our genre and he recently died he actually died the day after my birthday in january and uh is very sad but not unexpected because he had been battling throat cancer or mouth cancer for a number of years and the last time i saw him he looked very very bad and uh, i knew i wouldn't see him again and funny because the last couple of times I saw him, I thought I wasn't going to see him again. And so every time I would see him one more time, I was very grateful and honored that uh, he was around longer. And I wish I'd known he was, you know, on his way out. Uh, I would have um, reached out to him a little more. But anyways, we all have our regrets when our friends die. So I have known Dallas for over 25 years I believe I first met him at a convention called Nikon and uh, the first time I met him he was up in a tree and uh, it was uh, the beginning of a really good friendship we weren't friends like we talked we never talked on the phone we never emailed but when we would see each other at conventions especially Nikon because that was his favorite and my favorite too back in the day I was like no time had passed we would see each other would just fit together would hang out would drink he loved his scotch and uh you know would often end up at little private room parties together and stuff like that and so he was a, a good friend um 
and it, he was like just so much fun to be around. I loved being around him. He made me laugh so much. Even though I know he looks scary to those of you who don't know him, he had an amazing sense of humor, as most horror writers do, as I often talk about in my various videos and courses and stuff. Horror writers have a great sense of humor. Most of them do. Some of them don't. Most of them do. And Dallas, his regular name, it, it, his real name was Dallas. His pen name was Jack Ketchum. So... I saw this announcement for a tribute anthology for Jack Ketchum and it had something like 28 names of authors who uh, were anticipated to be in the anthology and I first looked at the announcement and I thought there's only one woman writer on there and, and that's kind of a drag and, and I read it again and it looked to me like it wasn't an announcement of a book that was finished because they weren't planning to publish it until Dallas's birthday which is in November he's a Scorpio and uh, so I thought maybe there's still everyone's still working on their stories and maybe they'd welcome another horror writer who's a woman who knew him into their anthology so I wrote to them yesterday and just asked if it was too late to submit a story to the anthology because uh, I thought maybe I'd missed the call or whatever. I, it was very short emails, like one sentence. I'm just like, can I submit to the anthology? I just asked. And they wrote back, yeah. And so there it was. No big mystery, no conspiracy, no... <laughs> no. They, but they wrote back to me. I actually didn't expect them to write back to me until today because yesterday was an American holiday and I figured everyone's out drinking and stuff. But I just wrote to them because it was in the moment and I just thought I'd write to them. But in the meantime, between the time I wrote my email to them and the time they responded, and they responded around midnight or so, um... All hell broke loose in the horror field. It just went crazy. It exploded. Um, other people were noticing the names on the list and just totally irate. Uh, irate that there was only one woman writer on the list. And then irate because there were a lot of people unknown on the list or people who other people didn't feel should be on the list because they weren't friends with Dallas and it was a tribute anthology. The reason why I wanted to be involved was because this book is being promoted as um, being, uh, what's the word, legitimized or whatever by his actual estate. They had actually said, yeah, do this anthology, we're behind you, we'll help you with it. And the proceeds are going to charity, uh, and Dallas was a huge animal lover, as most of you know. Um, he's actually skipped conventions to take care of his cat and stuff like that. So you know, it would make sense that the proceeds would go to a charity. And then meanwhile, on various people's Facebook pages who were upset because of the lack of women writers or the lack of people who they felt actually knew Dallas um, and should be included, it, it really spiraled and a few people popped up and said they had been working on tribute anthologies to Jack Ketchum and they had been looking for writers and were secretly trying to get stuff done. And I think there were at least four of them I just saw in those threads, whether they were all actually in the works or just people thinking about it and hadn't done anything about it yet, whatever. All I know is I was never asked to any of them <laughs> so, and I didn't expect to be. I don't know if people know that I did have the friendship with Dallas so there are pictures of us together. Um, so what's happening people are losing their shit man people are losing their minds and i understand people being upset i was i was horribly upset when i saw that list i'm like i was like what the f like why look at all these men on this list and some of these names i don't recognize but of course it doesn't mean anything because i don't read a lot of small press and i thought maybe a lot of these authors were actually uh the stable of authors for that publisher and maybe they had opened it to their stable and then perhaps we're going to look elsewhere as well and there isn't actually an editor attached to the project yet so that's probably one of the issues because if they had had Don Doria or someone like that attached to the project then someone who knew Jack Ketchum and his legacy also would have known who some of the people who are you know who have been in the industry with them for years 
you know, they may have had a better selection. It's hard to know. It's really hard to know um, who to invite into a tribute anthology. I wouldn't know who to invite. If I had to edit a tribute anthology to Jack Ketchum, I would not because... I can think off the top of my head about 40 people who should definitely be in that anthology, but how big is this anthology going to be? How much paper is that going to be? Uh, you know, these are going to be print books as far as I understand. Um, are these, and are these all fiction stories? Are they some of them remembrances? Maybe some people are only writing a few paragraphs. Maybe some people are doing poems. Maybe some people are doing... Uh, um, I don't know, just short flash fiction things. It's hard to say. I haven't written back yet to uh, Hellbound Books, uh, but I'm going to ask them, you know, what, how, what's the length, when's the deadline and all that. And uh, so the thing is, if you have a company, I guess you can pretty much do what you want with it, right? And I'm not sure it's up to me to say that some of these new writers or maybe they're not new but unknown to me writers have no business writing to attribute anthology because I don't know what how Dallas touched them you know you don't know how someone touches you you know um what influence they may have had on their work maybe some of these writers became writers but my phone there's trucks there's people hammering the tiles back on the roofs from the tornado last week <laughs> <laughs> the garbage is coming. This is not a good time to be doing this recording. Maybe on my voice mic you can't hear all the commotion. I'll shut that window, but it's not going to help because my door's open behind the screen. <laughs> so I ah! Anyways, what do you do in these cases? It's a tricky situation. I do not envy those editors and publishers but that's the thing though they do not have a editor yet for the project so I, I, in a way this is a huge learning curve for all of us watching the situation in the situation and so on so this publisher was preemptive I think they were so excited about their anthology that they didn't really use common sense in how they announced it personally I would never announce people in an anthology until the contracts are signed and in fact I personally never announce I'm in an anthology until I've signed a contract um, because you never know even if you're invited in and right now I'm working on some stories to anthologies I've been invited into that does not mean they're going to take my story that's not a guarantee I'm getting a contractor that I'll even be in those books you and this is something people outside of the business may not know and this is information new writers should understand it's just because you're invited into a story um, anthology or you're invited to submit a book to a publisher or you're invited you know to, to participate in a round robin or a novella contest or whatever is never a guarantee of anything the only guarantee you have of anything is when you have signed that contract it's not and even when you sign the contract it's not necessarily a guarantee you'll get paid because so many times these small presses die before anything even happens now with regard to this particular small press <coughs> from what I understand <coughs> I can't even pause this because of the stupid program I'm on oh I hope you guys don't hear all these truck noises because of the um, as I say in the process and the way the writing world is a lot of these public all the, a lot of these publishers can actually go under before you ever get a check or before the book even comes out this is why i have my book weird tales of terror all the stories in that anthology with the exception of the novel at the end were accepted into anthologies and were paid for but the anthologies all died they never saw the light of day except for I think one of the stories was in something but all the rest 
And one of the, and the, I think the most I ever got paid for a story that never happened was a story um, about absinthe. And I don't believe it's in my Weird Tales of Terror, and I should reprint this story someday. Um, I got paid like something like 600 bucks for a story that never even got published. <laughs> and uh, it did get reprinted eventually in a magazine, and I sure didn't get any 600 bucks for it. But yeah, um, there's a lot of things to learn. So with regard to the publisher, um, perhaps they only should have teased a couple of the bigger names for the anthology, like Brian Keane or someone like that, and then worked its way. Holy guacamole. <laughs> Can you hear all this? Ah, this is what's happening in the horror field. Just chaos and commotion and a lot of banging around. <laughs> it's the garbage trucks coming to do the garbage things. I think they're gone now. I don't even know if you even heard that. I'll probably listen back to my recording going, wow, that really is a good mic. You guys didn't hear a thing, and I'm just losing my mind here. But, yeah, so I, I think lessons learned because, you know, I'm doing anthologies too. I have edited a couple of anthologies. I edited uh, Love Astrology, and I edited uh, Beach Boys of Summer. And... Uh, I'm going to be editing a couple more in the future. And so I guess now I don't even want to talk about anthologies because we see what happens. So I think part of the issue, if we look at this as a learning experience for everyone involved, that the publisher, first of all, needed to hire a proper editor before they extended invites to... 30 or 40 authors so 30 on the list and even while the scandal and the rage was flying through Facebook last night actually a couple of women were added to the list because they just hadn't gotten around to <laughs> being getting their names back I don't know when the invites went out I don't know how long they took to come back I know Linda Addison is now attached to the project and probably some more authors and the person who actually started the project is a woman so, but she's not an editor, she's just connected to the publisher. So, the learning lesson is, I guess, just do a couple of names um, as a tease, but don't announce people who are in it until you actually have their um contract in your hand because they could pull their stories anytime and people are pulling their stories because they don't want to be associated now because of the scandal and this and that um and uh so yeah don't don't announce table of contents till you have those contracts signed but yet on the other hand if they had waited to announce the table of contents people wouldn't have noticed that there were uh, a small number of women and then maybe they wouldn't have included more women maybe you know this was a good thing because now they can correct their table of contents and revamp uh, their plan going forward. And I'm not suggesting at all that they should not include everyone they've already invited because that's even worse than overlooking all the wonderful woman writers who actually knew uh, Jack Ketchum personally and would love to write for him who are prominent writers in the horror field. And... Yeah, so it's a bit of a mess. So that's this week's scandal. And it's a mess. And everyone's... Well, I know the publisher is trying to correct things, or at least what I could see when I was looking a couple of hours ago. I haven't checked the latest round of flames. <laughs> but these things happen all the time. And much like what happened with Cockygate, which I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, I think a lot of these things happen, and they, and certainly the fans, fan, flames get fanned on Facebook and other social media because people are quick, impulsive and quick to anger and quick to say things and quick to um, offer their opinions on situations where maybe they don't have all the facts about them. The full moon is in Sagittarius right now, which, and Sagittarius is a fire sign, so yeah, emotions are high, tempers are high, and so on. Uh, uh, Sagittarians aren't actually angry people, but they, they're very, like, 
gregarious and enthusiastic. So this uh, energy of the Sagittarian full moon, I think, is really feeding, <laughs> fueling the flames, literally, of uh, this particular controversy. But yeah, I was going to say about Cocky Gate is that it was very scandalous from the writer's field and the writer's point of view. But whether the reading public really gets wind of these things, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think they do. And, uh, you know, unless they're actually like following their favorite people and reading all the Facebook networking gossip but I think for the most part and that's what's going to happen with the Jack Ketchum anthology is that by the time it comes out uh, everyone will have forgotten this particular controversy and the readers will have known nothing about it and they'll either buy it or they won't and they'll either raise and money will be raised or it won't for the charity so there you go so I guess that's kind of my babbly look at what's happening I don't know what's right or wrong. I'm not sure what the answer really is for this. Because as far as I could see, they are trying to fix things. And we'll see. Writers are very emotional people. And I think part of the problem is that there's not enough pieces of pie for everyone who wants to be a writer and who is a writer. And like I said, if I was to do a tribute anthology to Jack Ketchum, I can think of 40 people like that who should be in this book. And then there'd be another 40. I'd go, oh, yeah, they should be in it, too. It, it's a very, very big hill to climb. And maybe something like that should have been an open call because there, he did touch so many lives that perhaps an open call might have been better, easier, worse. I don't know. But it's not my problem. I just have to decide what I'm going to do about it. But So I have made this video to kind of educate people on what's happening. And I think it's a lesson that people are watching. If you have women on your table of contents, people are watching. And not all women are going to do what I did, which is just simply write to the editor and ask if you can be included, which is what I did. <laughs> Have a great day.